Hello, Sunday video. I'm just going to refer to one um, link and it's quite interesting. I'll explain it to you, although it's got a, a whopping great big bit of mathematics right in the middle of it, which normally makes me go, ah, and go, poof, you're gone. Um, I did get to the bottom of it and I found it quite interesting. I'll try and explain it to you and I'll leave the one link there for you to follow if you want to follow it. Basically what we've got is the thing that everyone knows that over the last 30 years, let's say let's say the United States because it's what the, the paper's about. In the United States the households have taken on more and more debt. Um, we know it's true for the United Kingdom and other places in the Western world as well. But this paper goes to show that it is not actually true in a very strange way. Um, it is true from the year 2000 to 2006 in the real part of the housing boom. But in the 80s and 90s, it is not true. It seems that households have taken on debt as much as they ever did in the 50s, 60s and 70s. But the percentage of household debt to GDP didn't rise because... Nick's slowing down because... I haven't totally understood it myself. I'll tell you the bit I have understood. It didn't rise because of the interest rates and the inflation rates, is, is what this paper is talking about. In other words, the actual behaviour from 1950 to, the, to 2000, that 50-year period, the actual behaviour of American households taking on debt has not changed. But if you remember from the charts, I know, I'm sure I don't need to put them up, of what we call interest rates. They go from the end of the Second World War and up to 1981 was the peak, was it? Around there anyway, the Volcker years. And then from the Volcker years, they come all the way down again. So we've got a up and then a down. Right. So what this paper is showing is that at, as I say, 2000 to 2006, there was a great increase in household debt being, being taken on. So we'll just appreciate that and take it off the graph. So we've got 50 to 80 and 80 till, or 60, keep it in equal periods. 60 to 80 and 80 to uh, 2000, with the interest rate in the middle at 80 being maximum and then coming down again. If you can imagine yourself, I'll, I'll give you a, a fact just to keep you interested because this has been a bit of a, a, a winky wanky video to start with. In my working career, I never accepted, accepted a wage rise that was less than 10% ever. Right. Now that gives, although that's, I'm a bit strange because I had a very strange working career, but what we had in the late 70s and it knocked on into the 80s was you never nobody ever got an, an, an increase of less than 10% because that's what was going on the interest rate was big the uh, um, inflation rate was big wage rises were big and it was a big amount of time and it lasted a long time so what was happening is let's say you take a mortgage on for a hundred thousand money well, we're in America, so I'll keep it to 100,000 money. 100,000 money. When all this huge inflation stuff is going on, you can imagine after five years of 10% or seven years of 10% uh, wage increases, plus the extra for promotions, etc., your mortgage of 100,000 thingies is soon becoming nothing at all. Although the interest rate has gone up pro rata, the amount of money that you're making makes the actual monetary amount for the mortgage, and that's what it's written in, um, negligible. And it was really advantageous to take out a mortgage then. But since the great slide down from 80 till the year 
we know the slide continued to now, but it slid down from 20% uh, interest rates down to 4% interest rates at the end, of, let's say 2001. But as these have been going on, what's been happening is interest rates come down, inflation rates have come down, and wage increases per year have been coming down. And there hasn't basically, in Nick's sort of terms, the great bites are now that used to be taken out of the mortgage with all these great big interests have come down to little nibbles. And it's those that the importance of that lower inflation rate, really, and lower um, uh, wage rises, has made the percentage of um, household debt to GDP rise so much. It's, it's because it's harder now to pay those mortgages off where in the late 70s and early 80s it was easy because we ta we were taking great big bites out of it. Yeah, But the actual amount of household borrowing all the way up to here, down to here, hasn't actually changed when it should have done. It was if the households were capable of this sort of basic mathematics. I don't know how to do it, but yeah, you get the idea. It was only too logical up to 1980 and in start into the 80s when these big chunks were coming out to take a mortgage out. But as soon as it looked like from 80 coming to 2000, with inflation and uh, wage rises going smaller and smaller, ma making mortgages harder and harder to pay, it became less and less easily logical to take a mortgage out. But the people still did it. And obviously, after 2000, not only did they do it, they did it on a rampant scale, but with still uh, what we could say mortgage rates low, and we know that wages as a percentage of whatever weren't going up. In, if anything, they were flat or going down. In other words, if, they, if people really did um, practical um, mental mathematics on this, they would have found that what they were doing wasn't actually very sensible. It was only sensible because of the house, price, uh, house prices rising. And now the house prices have flattened off. There's an entire generation of people that are going to forever struggle to pay their mortgages off. I think that's what I wanted to say. Um, so I'll leave you with it, and I'll leave you with the one link and see if um, anybody else wants to make any more of that because I found it interesting, but I must I, I admit, obviously, that I, I haven't grasped the, the, the whole um, thing of it. I don't think I have anyway, but I'll, I'll leave you with that um, as presented. Bye.